morning class. Okay, here's our last lecture um, that you'll be responsible for exam one. Um, this one's on cryotherapy theory and application. We'll review a little bit about the heat transfer concepts. Um, you should have those pretty good now after um, listening to the thermotherapy one and starting with heat transfer. It's going to kind of um, reiterate that a little bit here. There is some controversy out there right now whether to use ice or not to use ice, when to use it, when not to use it, does it enhance or does it inhibit tissue healing. Um, I'll post an article from uh, Dr. Lucas Pratt who is a practitioner up in Northern North County. Um, I encourage the group that decides to do cryotherapy for their um, group project to reach out to him. He has some good resources and some references in that article that you can look at as well. Um, so let's get started. So here we go again with the transfer of heat. Um, obviously we know that again that's coming the heat to or from a patient's body and between tissues and fluids of body. So here might be where you're going to think when you had the hot pack was the temperature or that transfer of heat going from the hot back to the body and then with cold is going to do the reverse, correct? Um, so the body's going to warm that heat, that ice pack up, right? So here's your mechanisms again, so you can kind of quiz yourself, conduction, think about which modalities um, use conduction as our heat transfer versus convection versus conversion versus radiation versus evaporation. So knowing what we talked about in the last lecture, which one of these would you say um, we use for cold packs versus a whirlpool um, versus the vapor coolant spray? So conduction is that direct contact again. Whoops, I'm jumping the gun. I'm just going to go over this really quickly because we already talked about this. This is the exact same slide that's in your heat one. So I'm not going to go over this again, but just to kind of reiterate um, the guidelines for conduction. And if you answered cold packs, then you were correct. And ice packs also would be in there, correct? Good. Um, convection is that contact with air or water. So that would be that contrast bath kind of thing. Uh, conversion of non-thermal form of energy to heat. Um, again, this is going to be that chemical cold pack that you slap in and the chemical releases and makes that pack cold. Radiation, we're not going to get that with um, cold. Evaporation, that's going to be that vapor coolant spray that we talked about. So here we go. Therapeutic use of cold. Why do we use it? Um, we use it for that inflammation, that edema that we get, um, and also as an analgesic to decrease pain. Um, it does reduce spasticity, and that's why it can control the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, which spasticity is one of its um, symptoms. It can facilitate movement. So a lot of times if um, you have an ice massage, which we'll show in class, you can do a quick stroke to a muscle to help facilitate it to fire. Um, so I'll show you that technique in class. Um, it does the same thing as heat therapy as far as it influences all these different systems in our body. It influences the hemodynamic, the neuromuscular, and our metabolic processes just in a different way. So we talked about this when we were comparing on that chart last lecture about you get that constriction of the cutaneous vessels and the reduction in blood flow. That lasts as long as the cold is on there. Um, application is usually less than 15 to 20 minutes. Um, we have something called cold-induced vasodilation. This is most likely to occur in distal extremities. It occurs with cold application greater than 15 minutes and below 1 degree Celsius or 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So a lot of times that's that um, freeze bite, you know, like you're out and you get in an avalanche and you get stuck and, um, you know, it gets below that cold and you start to, um, your body gets this protective um, hunting reaction and you get this what we call cold dude vasodilation to try and um, save the limb. So it's a protective mechanism that happens with that. Um, so you want to limit your cold application to less than 15 minutes when treating a distal extremity. Um, generally speaking, most of our cold packs get warmer from our body, so it's usually not an issue, but um, for some it is, so you just want to use that guideline. And again, you're always going to be checking the skin both before and after and uh, realizing your contraindication so you don't apply it to somebody that's going to be more susceptible to that. Um, we talked in that chart about decreased nerve conduction velocity, so this can be a good thing for that um, for a, 
a nerve that's inflamed and you don't want to increase more velocity to it. Um, but you're also going to be aware of this so that when you have somebody who's got a post-op um, nerve transplant, um, how do you want to treat that? You know, what is the goal for that nerve transplant? And are we wanting to increase the nerve conduction velocity? If so, we absolutely don't going to want to use ice with that. Um, again, this helps um, elevate that pain threshold. It's just a different way of saying it decreases pain or it's an analgesiac. Um, it does alter muscle force whoops. Um, Oh, look at me. Here we go. Muscle force generation. Um, it decreases spasticity and it facilitates the muscle contraction. So metabolically, it decreases the metabolic rate. It affects that inflammation and healing process. It's not recommended with delayed healing, obviously, because if you're vasoconstricting, you're not promoting healing in that area. Um, so you got to be ca cautious of that. Um, it's recommended for prevention and reduction of collagen destruction, inflammatory joint diseases such as osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so these are its uses. Contraindications. Um, Cold-induced urticaria. That's a good, um, I think that was one of our med uh, medical terminology words. Um, basically means cold hypersensitivity. You get that rash, remember, from that. Um, cold intolerance. Uh, cryoglobulinemia. I'm going to let you look that up. That might be a quiz question for you to know what that means. Try and think about it pertains to cold and what in the um, blood. Okay. Uh, perioxymal cold hemoglobinuria. I'm also going to let you look those two up and um, those be quiz questions for you. Okay. Raynaud's disease and phenomenon it just makes them more susceptible um, and it aggravates that condition over regenerating peripheral nerves um, because we talked about that decreased nerve conduction it's not a good thing for a regeneration of a peripheral nerve um, over area of circulatory compromise or peripheral vascular disease um, where you don't want to have a decrease in blood flow okay precautions over a superficial main branch of a nerve over an open wound hypertension Poor sensation and poor mentation, you're going to see that this is a precaution for almost every modality and a lot of times I use that actually as a contraindication um, unless I'm going to be there and be able to actually uh, monitor that patient or have someone there that's going to monitor them so that um, it doesn't cause them harm. Um, very young and very old patients and more just um, because of their sensitivity of their skin and their ability to tell you one way or the other whether it's too cold or not adverse reactions we talked about that that's that cold induced vasodilation if it doesn't happen you get that frostbite causes tissue death you get nerve damage um, post-treatment injury yeah it's an analgesia decreases nerve conduction and decreases muscle response so you just have to be aware of that um, obviously it can melt and that can be water on the floor and you can slip and fall from that so that could be an adverse reaction as well so you have different techniques. We'll work with cold packs, and I think we're going to get some crushed ice from the athletic training room, so we'll try and make some ice packs as well because you'll use it quite commonly in the clinics. Um, we'll do an ice massage, a controlled cold compression unit. We have a unit called a squid. There's ones out there called um, Game Ready, and there's a few other ones, and so we'll kind of play around with that a little bit. And then we talked about the vapor coolant sprays. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to get one for you, but if I do, then we can try that out as well. Sensations in cold application. So these are the what we call the, the five stages. Um, so it's going to be cold, and it seems kind of silly to have to tell your patient this, but these are the things you want to be able to do when you're applying it. You're going to tell them that you're going to go through these different stages so they kind of know what to expect. Because um, if you don't, then they usually don't make it to that numb phase. So you're going to tell them it's going to get cold, it's going to burn, it's going to ache, and then it's going to go numb. And everybody's a little bit different, and the area that you're putting it in is going to depend on how long that takes before you get that numbness. But it's really important, and we call this C-band, the acronym, and um, those are just the four stages um, of cold that you want to be able to um, educate your patient in so that they know what to expect, and then they can um, they generally tolerate it fairly well. It's a few funny faces. Okay, that's it. Um, not too bad. Um, happy studying and 
I'm going to post a couple other lectures on diathermy and hydrotherapy that will not be on your exam, but they will be things that we'll be working on in the lab. So I want you to have a little um, background before we go in there, a little foundation. Thank you.